Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to show you how to create a quilted knot and apply to this ring on the side for your jewelry cat design with the Rhino 3D software. Are you ready? Let's get started. Before we started, let's talk about this ring structure first. You can see that two of them are actually separated from the body just in case if you want to do two tone, then you can Boolean difference this out and make it as a puzzle once you're casting. Uh, the other thing is I have this as a full prong and we want this triangle Celtic knot to even need to arrange right here. So we will start building this prong set first and we'll build this shape and how to arrange on the ring shape. That's starting from the scratch. So we're going to come in into front view, use the circle command to creating any of the ring size that you want. In this case, I want a diameter for 16 millimeter. Then we can creating the ring shape later, but let's go ahead to bring in our stone. You can download the stone file at the description below. I have a newsletter for you to sign up. After sign up, you will get a link for the stone to download. So once you have the ring open, copy and come into the file that you wanted to do and paste on it so you will get the stone in there so i'm going to stay with the five millimeter and that's starting making the prong set first of all let's go ahead to use the um tube command and we are going to snapping into the zero and we're gonna coming into any of the size but you wanted the size be smaller than your stone is otherwise you're going to see uh, the metal from the top view and it doesn't look too good Right. So we are going to make it more than what we need at the front view you're going to see it's way too much, but we're going to have some room to trim it over. Also on the bottom, I'm going to use my gumball and hold the shift and control key together and scale it 3D with the gumball to make it a little bit taper. All right, so that's what we have there. The prong shape is up to you what you're going to use. I simply right here uh, on the demonstration, I'm going to draw a straight line. We are using the polyline command. And for this front view, uh, I'm going to pick up this curve and just simply pipe it for whatever size that you want for your prong. Somebody like the prong to be strong, somebody like the prong to be minimum. In, in this case, I only have a full prong in my design, so I want to make sure that they are strong enough. I also want to make sure it's not cutting too much of my prong. 20%, uh, under 25% will be ideal, and then that will be one prong. I simply just go into using the polar array, and we want it to to, we can come into the transform and we have the array and we want to use the polar or you can just type it array polar and then uh, I want to access uh, center to be snapping into the zero and we need four prongs so that's just type it four for 360 degree and then we'll get something like this. All the prongs that we have is not in the right angle so I simply just going to use the gumball to rotate the 45 degree there so they were sitting in this way okay so that's one is done and i also need to make sure that i trim the center off so underneath this gary area i want to open the window and then so that my stone will look brighter all right so we simply just going to making a cut by putting a rectangle right here and roughly for whatever how tall you want it but it's like really way too long right there and i'm going to move it up to where i'm going to cut the gallery open right so let's go ahead to use the sweep one rail and this is the rail this is the cross section and make sure that you record the history and then we can hit enter and we'll get something like that in case you don't like the high, for example, this is way close to the top, I can pick up my curve and it's kind of move it down or scale it down if it is opening is too big. If I have a record history, I can keep tweaking until I like it, right? So I'm just going to keep tweaking, find a spot that I like, and then we can simply just using the bowling difference. We want to difference this under gallery area out of this new cutting object that we create. So now we have a good opening right there. Let's work on the ring shank first. 
Now I have this, I'm gonna come into the side and decide what ring shape that I like. I simply going to use rectangle corner corners, just kind of giving a comfort fit looking profile for something look like this. All right, and then I'm going to moving this from this midpoint to the quadrant. If you just go ahead to using the sweep one rail, and this is a rail, this is your cross section, and you probably will get something like this. this is a really uniform ring shank. If that work for you, that's totally fine. I would like to have a something, it's more like a taper on the bottom. So I'm going to copy and rotate at the same time for this one to the bottom. I forgot to make sure the copy equal yes. So let's go ahead do one more time, copy equal yes on the top, and that's making a copy here and making a copy there, right? For those two on the side, maybe I want them to just go a little bit longer or wider. The one on the bottom, I actually want them to be tapered. So scale 1D down, something like this. And let's sweep one more time and see if we get better results. So we wanted to do sweep one rail. This is a rail and this cross section one, two, and three, hit enter. Make sure they all align. And if you are not sure, just bring them into inside of the ring shank and make sure all the arrow is facing the same place and the same direction. And we want to hit enter. Before we are doing anything, you also kind of see it's not close. So we want to close the sweep and we want to hit OK. So now we will have this right there. Okay, let's go ahead to creating the Celtic knot on the other layer. So I'm going to turn off what we have there and working with the Celtic knot on the top view. As starting with the triangle uh, for our reference, so coming into here that you have the polygon tool and you want to make sure the number of the size is equal three. We want to snapping into the zero for whatever size that work for us on um, that Celtic knot. So I'm not uh, going to do something roughly like this. Let's go ahead to draw the arc. We're gonna snap in uh, the arc right in the middle, snapping from this point to this point. And then we are going to do the same, snapping into the midpoint, go from here to here. And the same thing from here, snapping into the midpoint, go from here to here. All right. And then you probably will see what I'm planning to do is creating some cross section and then we can sweep there. So let's go ahead to give it a try. I'm going to starting in my front view, I'm going to create a cross section. So let's go ahead to create a corny corner one more time. This time I want to snapping into the center right here and decided what is the size that I wanted to have. In this case, roughly just a little bit less than one millimeter. And we'll get something like this coming down, something like this. All right, now I have this piece. Let me turn it into the red color. And I wanted to equally to come into the other side. So let's go ahead to have this one and let's go ahead to mirror to the other side, snapping with the center. So then you can see that what we have is this. If we just simply sweep this guy from here to here and we'll get something like this, right? And that's okay, but we wanted to go in, in and out. So we kind of need to tweaking this shape right there. So right now this curve is a degree two curve. And if you try to tweak it, you're going to find out this is a kink there. So whenever you have the situation like that, you always need to rebuild it. So let's go ahead to rebuild this guy. And we want to rebuild into more point, but make sure that the degree that you want is three. So let's go ahead to rebuild into the R number. I want it to be degree five. Now you can see it's a lot of a deviation, right? there. So let's make it into point count into nine and let's click OK. So we have a lot more point to edit, right? In this case, I'm going to moving up those two and even like this one, you want to go a little bit higher. So we can have it. This curve is going to the top and coming into flat. 
right? Let's give it a try by sweep one rail one more time. This is a rail, this is a cross section one, cross section two, then you will get something like this. If we have this and we simply just having this guy to be polar array for three of them, and this is what we are going to get for 360 degree, then we'll get something like this. Notice that the this is not connected right there. So we want to make sure first, make sure they are connected. So instead of using the curve going this way, completely outside, I'm simply just going to move this curve inside by snapping into the quadrant and to the endpoint right here, this one too, I'm going to snapping into the quadrant to the endpoint. And let's take a look what happened. And I, I intentionally to show my thinking process. So if you have something puzzle you need to figure out, then that kind of helping you uh, with this thinking process. I want to sweep one rail, cross section, cross section, and then I will get something like this. All right, they are looking good. And then I'm going to using the polar array. So we want to uh, snapping into the center and we want a three piece and 360 degree. All right, now it's much better. You can see that we have this intersect and we could just cap it and boolean different. And also the middle part look nice, look like in and out. The problem that we facing now is if you take a look at the render, even though you bowling them, you're going to see this ugly edge there. So now our challenge is how we are going to make them super align. So after we bowling, we don't see this ugly surface. So we need to go back one step. Let's delete the surface and that's starting Again, we are going to use the sweep one rail. This is a rail. This is cross section one and two. No problem. Align them perfectly. And just in case we want to change, we want to record a history. So that's marking this rail into the red color. And let's take a look on this. I'm going to delete this curve and this curve um, because we really like the curve that we have, the angle that we've been changing. So I'm going to use the polar array tool and then I'm going to snapping into the zero, have three of them for 360 degree. Okay, so now when we are sweeping with the second one, we need to make sure that we are cutting into the right angle. So I'm going to draw a straight line snapping into the zero and then snapping into this point right there. So now I'm going to using this curve. Let me mark them into the green color and we wanted to trim off this surface right there. So now if we are sweeping with this surface, that should be right. And to the other side, I simply just going to have this curve rotated from this view to this view because we don't know the other side, what angle that this should be, right? So now let's go ahead to duplicate these edges from here and here and join them together. Now, if we are going to do another sweep, we are going to do the sweep one rail. This is the rail. This is the cross section one. This is a cross section two and make sure they are aligned. And then we click OK. And then we will have our second one right there. OK, the third one that we are going to have is we're going to draw the straight line again from this point to this point. And we're going to draw from this point to this triangle point. Let's take a look on the top view. This will be more clear for you to see. Now this one is perfectly matched and we need to have this is sweeping from here to the end of here. So we are going to have those to trim off all this extra surface first. And then we are going to duplicate it, the edges of this guy right here and also this guy right here. And we wanted to join them. Let me show you in the perspective and we'll get something like this. Now, once we have it, we are going to sweep one more time. And this is the rail. This is the cross section and this is the cross section right here and that will give you another curve. Make sure that you align correctly and that will give you another surface like this. So this is how you make this Kelton knock. Let's take a look on the render and to see if this edges is better. 
Okay, and I have another video specific talk about Celtic knot. Uh, I will list right here on the right top corner. If you're interested, just take a look on the video. There's always more than one way to build the same model, right? So let's go ahead to join them together and we are going to use this shape. We're going to turn it back to the ring that we have and having this piece going to the top, going to the side. I want to make sure I rotate it 90 degree and moving to the other side and we want to align to the center horizontal center and that will be the piece. And now I wanted to make sure it's hopping nicely on it. Now the piece that we have is pretty straight. Uh, the, the easy way to make them bend a little bit is using the bend command and we want to make sure that they bend perfectly hopping on the ring. All right, so now we have this piece right here and we can also mirror to the other side to have another piece sitting on the top. Now let's talk about the ring shank. We actually don't need the ring shank right in the middle. So we are going to trim it by drawing a straight line about right here. And I'm going to mirror to the other side. So to be symmetrical and we can have this one to trim right in the middle like this. After you trim, always remember this piece is no longer solid. We just need to use the cap command to bring it back. The bottom of this shape right here, we can have our ring shank and extrude it straight. Now we have the cutting tool. So we just need to pick up all our prong and also this under bezel. And then we want them to be pulling difference from this. So that way it will be nice trim there. Now, if that were for you, that would be fine. You can also cut it out the opening on the top. So you have a little bit opening like what I have on the previous model. And if you want to make it into a two tone, just need to make sure that you puzzle this back to your ring shank so you can solder and assemblage together after you done the two tone casting. I hope you enjoy this video. I have a lot more things to show you in my course for Jewelry Cat Master class. If you're interested in jewelry 3D model and want to learn faster, join my Jewelry Cat Master class with a private group coaching program where I will personally guide you through your learning process. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next.